Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex and this is The Ramble. And we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely and attractive Larry Bubble <laughs> Brown. Hello, Larry. Hey, Alex. <laughs> How are you? Let me turn your audio down just slightly here. Okay. Uh... Well, how you doing? Uh, you were supposed to have some kind of a procedure yesterday, weren't you? I was, and I got uh, either the flu or food poisoning, so yeah. I didn't get it done. You didn't get it done? No. Oh, God. Uh, this was supposed to be a, um, a, what do you call it, eye thing, right? The cataract, yes, which you, you've had, apparently. Yeah, both of them. Both of the eyes. Done. Gone. Taken and care I, of better than God gave us. That's what I've heard, yes. Mm -hmm. It's one of those situations where they replace what you had with something better. Uh, and you would think it wouldn't be better, but it is. you know. Um, and I think it will last a lot longer than your other eyes did. Yeah. I can't ma imagine when people got cataracts and they couldn't do anything about them. I guess in the old, uh, I mean, my father had him like in the 70s, and the, tr the surgery then was not very good, but uh, I think in the 20s you had to, when they took him out, you had to sleep with your head between a sandbag for three weeks, otherwise yep. they'd fall out or something. Yep, that was the, uh, that's what they did, and it it it, uh, it went on, it took what, three weeks, something like that, some amazing amount? Yeah, three yeah. weeks. <laughs> You had to be very careful about moving your head in any direction. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, but now you just go in. They put a cup over your. They do whatever they do. They put a cup over your eye for one night, so you won't, you know, damage it. And yeah. then you go back in the next day. They check it to make sure you're okay. And after you're deemed okay, that's it. You know. And I heard the actual surgery. Like I think they do it like in five or ten minutes. I think it was, it might have been 15, okay? And then you're out, you know, yeah. and there's no pain because they deaden the eyeball uh, just with drops. And, uh, you know, they do their little thing. And what happens is your eye is open, and all of a sudden it goes dark because they pulled out the old one, the old lens. And they put in the new lens, and you're good to go, you know. And then you come back the next day, and I think they... Maybe have you come back a week later to make sure that it's okay, and then you're uh, you just uh, bl they bless you and tell you that you don't need to come back. Yes, one of the true, uh, one of the few improvements we've actually had in medicine. Now, did, did you uh, do you do you are both of them going bad or just one? No, my right eye's pretty good, and the left eye's the ba the worst one. But I've got glasses so I can drive. So. They always talk about uh, your eyes getting, your cataracts getting ripe. They're ripe. <laughs> yeah. And if, they, like, if they're ripe enough, they it's then harvest do Harvest time. Yeah. Mine, I, I was okay with mine. Mine, was, my other eyes was fine. But within about a year, it kind of started getting foggy. So I went back to him. He said, yeah, you got another cataract. Get rid of that one too. You know. So then I had both of them done. And uh, I've, since then, the only thing that's happened is my eyes have just gotten worse as I get older, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, so th that, that's what happens. It's one of the, those, those uh, operations you get that shows you've gotten older. Yeah, I think it's uh, for er everybody over 50, a lot of people get them. But... Yeah. And then... Then you get that cured, and like you said, then it's uh, then you get then you get macular degeneration and, and all kinds of other things. Macular degeneration. Yeah, I, I haven't gotten anything like that. I don't think. I, I keep hearing Henry Winkler on the radio talking I about getting. I haven't been to you got to get checked for macular degeneration. Yeah, I haven't gone back to my eye doctor in a while. 
Good. Number one, he's kind of almost out of the business at this point. And I just, you know, I, I, I'm just tired. Of, I don't want to go to doctors. I'm sorry. You know? The less Stay I, away, Christ. The only doctor I go to that I like is my urologist, which is unusual because I usually used to fear and hate urologists. Ugh, but then I, I got this one who is just, he's wonderful. Just wonderful. And uh, I, I, I like them. I like them a lot. So you know it, uh, and that's good. So I don't mind going seeing him. I only have to see him once a year now, and I just had my most recent uh, blood test. And again, my PSA, as they call it, is undetectable. Uh, that's because my prostate's pretty much undetectable as well. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, you know, my favorite line to him was, he says, how are you doing? He says, well, outside of the fact that my penis is now a vestigial organ, you know, <laughs> I, I'm okay. <laughs> it's, like an, it's like an appendix. Yeah, well, you know something I got to tell you about my penis. <laughs> uh, I'll talk about my penis for a moment. We had a very good relationship all my life. For some reason, it was quite adequate, and um, I had a lot of fun with it. Okay? <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. And he never failed me. He was pretty good. Over the, over the uh, oh, I don't know, 80-some uh, years that it was a- active, uh, it, uh, I never had any, uh, any problems with it. He uh, usually always got up and all of that. I never had to look down at it and go, well, what's happening with you? You know, none of those things. But once in a great while, but I had a good time with it. So... I don't feel any resentment now that it just doesn't seem to be doing what it used to do. So, and it will happen to all of us if we live old enough. See? Yeah, that's uh, that's age. That's the. Uh, I wonder if people in their uh, hundred can have sex. <laughs> I don't think so. I, you know, I I really can't have it now. You know, but I have no desire for it either. So. Well, that's the great thing about getting older. You, the desire goes away, which because uh, and that desire well, keeps you well, as I put it, out of trouble. As I put it, your dignity comes back. Exactly. <laughs> yes. I keep I keep trying to explain to my wife why guys are the way they are, you know, uh, and uh, why we are the way we are is that we have this constant. Uh, how can we put it? Uh, territorial imperative to inseminate the herd. That's right? a good way to put it. No, that our whole our whole being is different than women, and we are positioned in that whole thing about procreation and so on and so forth in a different position as well. Women have their own, you know. I mean, they're much more protective of their bodies than we are of ours because it could become and turn into pregnancy. So even in the animal world, you'll see a female fight off the male until he finally overcomes her. And, you know, basically, in the animal world, it's all rape. Okay? Oh, really? <laughs> um, but so anyway, so, you know, I mean, it, it, uh, it, it, it your parts start falling apart. Uh, but, uh, you know, I had the prostate cancer, and so what? You know, I've always been so afraid of death, and Marjorie was always afraid that if I ever got anything serious, I'd be unbearable to live with. And when I'm unbearable to live with is before I have anything, and I think I've got it. Once somebody tells me you've got it, I then do something about it. I'm very calm. I don't know what the difference is, but I, when I, somebody finally told me, oh, you have cancer, I go, oh, okay, what are we going to do about it? Okay, here's what we're going to do about it. Okay, let's do it. We did it, and I, you know, I just went through it like it was, you know, water rolling off my back. It was very strange. fear was worse than the disease. Oh, yeah, I still fear, you know, that any time I wake up in the morning I have a cough, I go, is this it? (laughs) You know, is this the beginning of the end? And, uh, yeah. By the way, if you're listening to us now, this is my session with Bubbles. It's never positive, okay? <laughs> you know. Well, you've got what? You've got a couple of problems. You've got your your cataract, and you got a hernia. Yeah. You got a good old fashioned hernia. 
I got the hernia and I got uh, a severe. I got really bad tinnitus. Oh, really? Over yeah. your ears? You mean? No, oh, just a ringing, just constant. What? I just learned. To, I've kind of learned to live with it, but uh, yeah. Wow. I mean, as as we're talking now, can do you have the? Is it kind of ring? I can hear the buzzing and ringing right now. Yeah. Wow. Have you gone to a doctor about that? Oh, many times, yeah. There's and, nothing we can do for it. Nothing we can do for it. Oh, boy. You know. That's the thing I don't want to hear. Hey, you've got cancer, but there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> you know? And I didn't, go to, I didn't go to rock concerts when I was younger. A lot of people that did that have the same problem. I didn't go to rock concerts... I stopped going to rock concerts when I was 20 or 25. You know, occasionally I'd go to something that was special, like the concert for Bangladesh, as an example. Uh, but I didn't, I never liked concerts, you know? Uh, you saw the Beatles. I, I, well, I saw the Beatles, but from backstage, because I was uh, one of the people that was involved in I would I didn't MC that show. I MC'd the show about two weeks later with the Rolling Stones. But uh we did a we did a concert at the radio station and I was just right backstage while they were playing. And as they came off stage I had my hand on the stairs and Ringo stepped on my hand. <laughs> Years later I told him he stepped on my hand. So he apologized, you know. I mean but he's gonna, it, he's gonna be the longest living beetle, I predict. Probably. Probably. He seems to be in good health, you know. And uh Well, well do you remember that were the Beatles or the Stones were they excessively loud? Do you remember? Uh in those days none of them were excessively loud because like for instance the Beatles only used stage amps. In other words, guitar amps. You know, they went out on stage and the guitar now the guitars are hooked into the whole sound system and it blasts the whole place. But in those days, all you heard was what was coming out of the amps. Hmm. So, so it, that was true of the Rolling Stones, too. It wasn't that they were couldn't have better audio. They were just, nobody had created better audio up until that time. All they had were those amps that they used to set up on stage. So basically, you know, there wasn't a bank of amps. All right? So... And you yes. would probably know this, but I always wondered, how did Ed Sullivan become aware of the Beatles? Probably somebody told him there's this sensation going on in England, and it's the Beatles, you know. And then uh, he wasn't the first one to have them on the air here. Uh, the first one ever to have them on the air here was Jack Parr. But Parr ran a film of them performing, okay, and saying, here's the biggest act in Europe. Uh, and then I, right after that, Ed Sullivan decided to bring them to the United States. And I guess it, I guess there were people who informed him of those kind of things, or he was somewhat aware of it. Well, that was a that was a pretty big score. Oh, it was a big score. Uh, also, wasn't Topo Gigio on the same show? <laughs> was there a there was there a comic that had to follow? Him? Oh, yes, but I can't remember who it was. Might have been Alan King. Could have been. Yeah, I'm just guessing here, but I thought <clears throat> well, I heard that years ago. I was told by Shecky, while he was still alive, something I didn't know, and that is <clears throat> that when you see a replay of that show with the Beatles, the Beatles were not recorded at the same time as the rest of the show. Because oh, okay. here, here was the theory. If we have those kids in the audience while we got Alan King on, it's going to be horrible. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and and they're going to scream so much that getting them to calm down after that would be impossible. So it's just better if we record them separately and then fold them into the show. In other words, they did all the Beatles numbers and everything and the girls screaming and then when they were through with that, they got rid of all the girls and brought in the adult audience. Well, that so, would make sense. So the rest of the acts would have a fighting chance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but most people don't know that. 
I, and I was amazed when Shecky told me that. When Shecky told me that, it's if he told me anything, it was gold, you know. Okay. You know, so um, uh, but that was how that that was done, and they appeared, I think, four times on Sullivan. I think the last time they were in Miami, because Sullivan was doing his show out of Miami. Uh, but he he had a I think a deal to do four shows so. Well, that was, that was such a, you think about it, it was such a funny show that Sullivan had. He'd have like somebody like the Beatles or the Stones, and then some really lame old ninety-year-old comic. Yeah, <laughs> or Topo Gigio. Topo Gigio, senior wenches who lived to be a hundred and three. Do you know that the Ed Sullivan Theater, the street beside the Ed Sullivan Theater, has a sub name, Senior Wences Boulevard? Really? Or Senior Wences Street or Avenue or whatever. Yeah. It's named after Sen- Sen- Senior Wences. Now, most people don't know who I'm talking about. But Senior Wences was maybe the best ventriloquist act of his day. And the, and the most beloved as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was just, he was terrific, you know. It was almost as though he didn't speak English. He kind of like d- did a half English. Uh, from with a Spanish accent, and everybody loved that. Everybody loved him. You know, he did, luckily he didn't have to follow the Beatles. <laughs> so, that was a, he'd say, "It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Easy for you, difficult for me." Yeah, right. <laughs> so you remember, huh? So he was like, so Sullivan was basically that was a uh, vaudeville show. Basically, it was a, well, we could call it a variety show, a vaudeville show. The trouble with Sullivan was he came in on the end of vaudeville, okay? Uh, His show was there when vaudeville was still kind of going. So he had all these acts, you know, these plate spinners and jugglers and uh, and singers. and, And what would happen in a vaudeville show is and what made a vaudeville show so great is the variety of acts that would appear. You know, you'd have a comic, then you'd have a singer, then you'd have a juggler, then you'd have a something else. And all of these things that today would not appear on the same bill. In those days, they did. And the, and the, uh, the wonderful thing about vaudeville for people who went to it was when you watched it, you may not like the act you're watching, but you knew within five minutes there was going to be another right. act, and you'd probably mm-hmm. like that. You know, and there were usually, I would say, if I remember correctly, about ten acts on a on a show on a bill. Uh, and and uh, you went up, you know, if you were a comedian, you went up and did uh, uh, fifteen minutes. If you were uh, a headliner, maybe less. You know, so people would then do one act. You know, you could take your act, do all your the same jokes. Yeah, I think I, I think it was less than fifteen. I think it was like yeah, seven or something. Yeah, and yeah. they they would said they would do those acts for twenty, thirty years. Yeah, the same act. They mm-hmm. never had to change it. Okay, now here comes Sullivan. All right, let's say you're a juggler. You've got your tight five, as we call it. Uh, your tight five. This is the amount that you go from town to town to town to town doing exactly the same juggling act. That you've honed for years. That you've honed for years. Now Ed Sullivan says, hey, come on my show and do your juggling act. So you go on Ed Sullivan, you do your juggling act. 50, 000, 50 million people see it, and you can never do the same juggling act again. Somebody said about TV in the early days, TV eats material. It ate, it ate a lot of acts. You know, these old vaudeville acts who for years had had a tried and true act. You know, they would go to market to market to market to market doing the act over and over and over again. But the same act. And they come on Sullivan, they do it one night, it's everybody in the world seen it. Goodbye. You know, wow. So, uh, you and know. Yeah, they were done. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that was the great thing about Vaudeville, you know, uh, is that they, you could, you know, you would you would have loved, you would have been great in Vaudeville, you know. <laughs> but what they had back then, too, you know, it were the dialect acts. You know what I'm talking about? They were like, they were Jewish dialects, Italian dialects, uh, so on. And they would come on, and a lot of the humor was even based on their dialect. 
Uh, and today, if you have one of those dialect acts, man, you would be so in trouble. Oh, that's racist. That's this. Yeah. That's that. You know. I mean, you got to realize that guys like Step and Fetch it. Uh, I always, I always had a theory. Step and Fetch it, folks. If you go back to your movies, was the guy who used to like uh, when he see, saw a ghost. You know, at first they tr they make his face go white on on the film, <laughs> and then he'd go, "Feats don't fail me now." You know, and I I I seen a ghost. You know, and things like that. And he played this very kind of oh cowardly. I don't know if that's the term I want to use. He he played this this role of the the what you would call the the archetypical Negro, all right. And everybody years later went, oh, that's terrible. You know that he, look at what Stephen Fetchett did to his race by demeaning them by playing that part. But what they don't realize is that at the time Stephen Fetchett was the only black comic doing this character. But it was so successful that everybody else imitated him. The Mantan Morelands and uh, I got uh, there are a whole bunch of names of people I could, if I could remember them, I could name, who basically took Step and Fetchett's act and stole it. And they're the ones that set the stereotype, not Step and Fetchett. And that's why I always feel he's underrated in history, in the history of comedy. He was a brilliant, brilliant comic who came up with this brilliant character that would have been fine if nobody else had done the same thing. But all these other guys then come along and go, feet don't fail me now. And, uh, you know, uh, Mantam Moreland, I think, had bulging eyes. I think that was his trademark. Uh, but I think Stephen Fetchett may have, was he in a movie with Bob Hope? Because I remember as a kid, I was watching it on TV, and the, the black guy says, boss, it's the zombies. And Hope says, well, it ain't baby snooks. <laughs> and I, I just remember as a kid, I was just howling. <laughs> now, who was baby snooks? Do you remember baby snooks? That I don't snooks? know. <laughs> Let me explain baby snooks to you. Uh, there was an actress. They made him musical out of her called Funny Girl called Fanny Bryce. Oh, okay. And when she went to radio, rather than be Fanny Bryce, she was Baby Snooks, this character of a young, a little baby girl. Not not a baby baby, but, you know. Uh, but she played this character, and, and it was a famous radio character that she played, and that was Fanny Bryce. Um, and, uh, so I, I, you know, uh, baby Snooks is probably forgotten as well. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it because the baby fact, Snooks. <laughs> well, you would only know it if you listened to radio in those days, which I grew up on that radio. So baby Snooks was one of my favorites. Okay. You, you know? Well, it's, uh, you think the, uh, well, remember, uh, there's so few black, Eddie, uh, Rochester, Rochester. Eddie. Oh, Eddie Anderson. That was. Well, that was the greatest black man on television and radio. And, uh, uh, yeah, I got some time to tell you why. Because he never played the subservient, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, he wasn't a stereotype uh, he, he, shuffle he, around. He, he wasn't subservient to, dis, uh, to uh, Benny. Yeah, and if Benny anything, treated him with respect. Well, but more than that, well, Benny as a performer did as an individual did. But in the character of Jack Benny, Jack Benny was always, the joke was, uh, to begin with, Jack Benny wasn't a comedian, he was a clown. Difference being a comedian pulls jokes on people, a clown has jokes pulled on him. And Benny was always the butt of every joke. Right. And Rochester was there as a vehicle for those jokes. So he was always putting down the boss. You know, so he wasn't playing a subservient uh, servant, as it were. Uh, he was only acting like he was subservient to keep the guy happy. You know, so it was a great. It was a he, uh, Eddie Rochester Anderson was one of the best, just one of the best of all time. 
Uh, and and I, I don't think you could say that he set a stereotype for black people. He only had that voice, which was, that was his voice. He couldn't help it, you know. But uh, anyway, so that's the history so they, of race. They must have been heroes of the black community because they would be the only black people you'd see on the screen. Well, I mean, a lot of these black uh, performers, Butterfly McQueen, great actress. But when she went, I, uh, Miss Scarlet, I don't know nothing about birth and babies. That was the end of it for her. <laughs> Jesus. You know, because in history, everybody's going to look at her as playing one of those subservient negroes. Yeah. So, anyway. Hey, listen, we're running out of time here, pal. We <laughs> sure are. <laughs> we, it goes by fast with you. just goes uh, by fast with you. It's a breeze. I enjoy it. Well, Thanks. I enjoy your history of uh, movies and <laughs> And we'll do we'll do more of it next week. Thank okay. you very much, Bubs. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Larry Bubbles Brown, folks. So he's nice to have Bubs on, and uh, yeah, next week again. Uh, we've done over two hundred interviews with him. Over two hundred. So, kind of cool. Kind of cool. Anyway, it's uh, Friday, and, uh, you know, it's uh, getting towards the weekend. And uh, I am, I think, finished with my full course of, uh, of Pax Lalved. Uh And uh, I am uh, better than I was, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. But look, we got a bunch of people, and uh, somebody that normally has not been calling the show lately. If... If, in fact, that's him, and it isn't some guy pretending to be him so he can show dirty pictures. So before I put these people on, I want to make sure that it is him. Uh, let's see here. Who we got? There, it is him. Okay, and he's at my front door. Come on in. Uh, hey, I'm uh, here. Yeah, let me see here. Let, let me, me in. Let, let me uh, do this. Okay, there we go. And uh, there's Phil Meyer. To what do we... Uh, 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 what's the term we use? I, I didn't know. have anything else to do. <laughs> what, you got yourself some echo machine now? Yeah, well, hey, wait a minute. Let me see if this works. Uh, uh, oh, here, oh, here we go. He's got a new toy, and he's going to play with it. And... What? We don't hear anything. We don't hear anything. You don't hear anything? No, um, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Is well, it something that might be copyrighted material that doesn't go through Zoom? No, no. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a record scratch. Yeah. Uh, that chimes. Did you hear chimes? Boy, this yeah. Friday's starting off good. Oh yeah, this is it's just really exciting. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, oh, this this one you'll like. Uh, Hi, how you doing, Alex? How you doing? Good, good to good see you. Good I'm, I'm doing all right. Can you hear this? So, so what? I, yeah, I can Somebody do. It. I can him. do it with this machine, but I never do it. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, because I I don't want to do it. <laughs> anyway, the old machine like died. I got a new machine. You, you, a new what? A new switcher? Yeah. A new audio well, a new mixer. Mixer. What happened to the old one? It just took a shit. And how much did you pay for that one? Well, I uh, I paid eleven hundred dollars for that old one, and yeah. I'm going to get it fixed, and they'll re factory refurbish it for a couple hundred bucks, and I'll put it on eBay and get rid of it. Oh, okay, all right, okay. Anyway, that's Phil Meyer, and to what do we? Uh, I'm, oh, the pleasure. That was the term I was looking for of you calling tonight. Well, I... Uh, you missed me, didn't you? Yeah, I missed you. Yeah, and, you, you know, I heard you were sick. And, and you figured, uh, you figured, you know, I got AIDS three times, and maybe if I get it a fourth time, I'll be dead. And you, then no, you, you know, then you I'm outside. Get... You won't let me in. <laughs> uh, you know? Where'd you get that picture? Um, somebody had something delivered to you, and that was the oh. picture from uh, the, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Amazon, Amazon, I think. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you were to I, I move, remember well, if wait it was a Alan if, if or move, Tony. If you move, it'll probably show the package, right? Uh, I, maybe. Alan would have never showed you no, that picture. No. Oh, there it is. No, there isn't a package there. Is That's not your doormat? That's Well, I think that's my doormat, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, Alan would have never sent you that picture. Uh, hey, I'd, I'd rat out Alan. And, where's the bus? I'm waiting to roll it over. Let here. me say hello to the rest of the people here right now. Uh, we're being joined by uh, Josh Wheeler. Good evening, Josh. Hello. And uh, uh, Virgil. Ver, uh, Mr. Nunn. Vernon Nunn. Uh -huh. Virgil. Vernon Virgil. Nunn. Virgil, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I saw both you and, and Wheeler were waiting on Ver, Vernon. I was going to say, well, we don't have too many people calling tonight, but at least I have the two most intelligent people that call this program. Alan and who? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so, you know, it's, uh, so it's, it's, it's Friday. And, uh, what was I pissed about today? Nothing much. We just, I, uh, uh, Nothing really. I'm trying to think about what was I mad about today. What was Bob? Well, I hope me? Tony texted you as much as he texted me. Really? It's not allowed. Complaining about the people complaining about him last night. What people complaining about him last night? I don't know. Who the hell knows? I don't know that anybody was complaining about him. He shut up. He said I was quiet. And I said I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Well, if he weren't here, then you wouldn't shut up. So it, it, it took somebody to shut you up. There you go. So good. You know. Um, yeah, and then he complained about this and Alex and his Pax Lovid and Alex and this and and Brian and Charlie not knowing what they were talking about and blah blah blah. Wait, and wait, like, what was he? What was he mad with me with Pax Lovid? Uh, but he says you, you bring it up all the time and I'm you know and I'm like it's his show. God, Tony. I brought it up. I can only bring it up for five days at a time because that's all you can take it for. No, <laughs> so, well, yeah. you know. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Uh, oh. I, I mean, I personally, I don't see any problem with it. Tony has has a problem with it. And I said, don't call in on the show, Tony. Wow. I don't. Jeez, I well, didn't mate. get it. And he says Alex accuses me of having coffee. I didn't have any coffee. And I said, you were pretty wired last night. Oh no, I, I well, wasn't. Well, no, it could be he's doing cocaine now. Could be. He's moved up. <laughs> yeah. He got his gabnet bucks in the mail. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so well, I'm sorry that he's mad, he's mad at me because I, I you know, I'm sorry I took Paxlovid. Uh, uh, you know, you know. Fact. Alan didn't get Paxlovid. Uh, no, he did. His doctor didn't like him. I think he should have prescribed it for him. You know, it's, yeah, there's did. nothing wrong with taking it. You know, oh, I I agree, but I had I had a couple drugs that weren't now. I saw my regular doctor today to follow up on some tests that were all normal. Yeah. And he asked why I didn't take the Paxlovid. And, and I said, you know, the doctor told me those drugs that he says, there's alternatives you could have taken. I said, yeah, that that's my whole point. That doctor was an idiot. Yeah. Said, yeah. Yeah. I don't, well, there I don't, are other, there are, they have other drugs besides Paxlovid that do somewhat similar stuff. But, you know, Paxlovid interacts with about 500 different commonly used medicines. And they have, they've come up with a list in the past year and a half or something uh, of alternatives to take. And like one of the yeah. drugs I couldn't take with it was my anti anxiety medicine, Valium. Which I only take a little bit of. You know, I don't. I don't understand that one. I don't see how that. You know, I saw a list. Okay. Yeah, and and so there are like in, in that family of benzodiazepines, which Valium is one of them. There's like six other drugs that would do the same thing that has no reaction to Paxlovid, and now I find that out. You know, I've never had it before, so. You know, and so he says, next time remind that if you get a doctor that's as dumb as that one, remind her or him that, you know, there are alternatives. There are definitely, there are supposedly are alternatives. I don't know the names of them or offhand, but uh, I, I'd rather go with Paxlovid because it's proven. And, 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 I and, and, before, and it, it only came in, it, it, uh, my doctor only told me to stop taking one of my drugs the last time. This this doctor I got it from didn't tell me about any of that stuff because they were like a, a walking clinic that I had to do on a Sunday. Uh, but originally my doctor told me, uh, don't take the first pill because you don't, because of the of your of your kidneys, oh, and right. and uh, don't take uh, your uh, uh, your statin. Right, Lipitor. Uh, yeah, and outside of that, he said everything's fine. And there were a couple yeah. there were a couple of other drugs I saw listed that I was taking, 
But supposedly it's just the I I don't know they can maybe conflict with it or something or they oh don't they can know. become toxic Men, oh, no yeah. oh, may, no well, many times they will list these pills not yes. because they're they're the, because they make uh, Paxlovid more ineffective or anything like that but they're just trying to be on the safe side that's their <laughs> lawyers making up that list you know uh, so they don't get sued and this maybe is, that, that, is the bottom line of it am I right Vern Vernon's nodding his head yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And hello, of course. I'm married to a lawyer, so you know, I I got I get that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, but I mean, the, the, these guys are being told by their lawyers, you know, what to say and what not to say, and what to do and what not to do. And uh, 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 you know, the CDC says after you no longer have a fever and have, or if you have a fever and you don't have to use Tylenol or whatever. For 24 hours, then you go on a five days of isolation, and after that, you can go out. You don't need to retest. If, well, the California Department of Health Services said one day, yeah, that, you know, the other day. I mean, like everybody's going to get COVID. They're going to keep getting COVID because they don't want to shut the economy down again. Well, apparently, apparently, what you get now, if you if you have the vaccination. Is just you know in my case I you you had uh, heard from me the other night Josh when I was supposed to get together you and the other guys uh, I, I you know I uh, actually all that I had was a bad cold that's what it felt like to me too you yeah. got Paxlovid I didn't but with the Paxlovid I took it on um, Sunday and Monday morning I woke up I didn't I, I, I had taken my second pill that night. And I woke up the next morning and I felt like 200% better. You know? I was anxious to get it too, Alex, but yeah, I yeah. ended up with a bow. So you got you just had to suffer with it for 10 days, you know. But no, they say that you, 24 hours without a temperature and you're you're out of the woods. So yeah. And I didn't have it. Actually, I didn't have a temperature by the time I started taking the Paxlovid, but I figured I better take it. Phil, Phil takes Paxlovid every day just to be on the safe side. Hey, well, I'm going to take it intravenously now. I have a breathing tube j just so that, uh, you know, an in incubator. In intubator. Intubator, yeah. just in case you yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. <laughs> I thought Phil took Abermectin to counteract it. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. Yeah, well, that Clorox, does. that Clorox stuff's supposed to work pretty good, I guess. On your sand, at least your your uh, your hero takes it. So yeah, and you know my and my sink and other things stay pretty clean when you use it. Yeah, well, it cleans your sinks and you, and it pretty well cleans you. It's so. <laughs> We're only kidding, too. folks. Our our ex president suggested it might be good to take something like Clorox, and. Uh, so please don't demonetize me because I mentioned it. I don't think that's what he said. I I also suggested shoving a UV light up your ass. Too. <laughs> yeah. No, what that that was the democratic interpretation of what well, he said. What, what what was what was the what was the MAGA interpretation? Oh, he told uh, people to. There's a lot of things that kill COVID. Why can't we come up with something like the the blue light or uh, disinfectants? Uh, he wasn't telling you to drink it. You're going to tell me uh, that all in all that wasn't a stupid question? No, it, uh, it's, a, it's a reasonable question to say, hey, there's a lot of things out there that work. Why can't we come up with something yeah. that well, does? Well, I'm glad you're back on the show, okay? Yeah, because, science according to Phil. Well, tonight. Huh? For tonight. tonight. And, I, and I was thinking about I calling you up shirt. to... Well, I was thinking... I should have worn my shirt that says, yeah. science doesn't care what you believe. That's right. <laughs> Uh, uh, what Jew <laughs> believes? <laughs> There's three Jews here. <laughs> what I was going to say. That's not what he said. I know. What I was going to say is. a Republican was, interpretation. I was going to call you and just ask you if you wanted to come on some Thursday or something and, and do the show with me for a half hour. You know, Sure, I'd be happy. Which to. you'd be happy to do. And, I, and it's just fun that you called tonight. But, you know, I, how I've missed you is uh, uh, that, you know, we talk about Trump. And we talk about his uh, his situation, and it's you know it is one sided here, okay? You know because there isn't anybody on this panel who particularly likes Donald Trump, um, oh. and uh, we consider him actually a danger to the democracy. Would you agree with me on that, Vernon? Yes. Yeah, and that uh, 
Uh, it's just horrible. It's it's horrible that we have two people that nobody wants this time. Okay, you know, Americans hate reruns, and this is a rerun, and um, it, and it's really boring and it's 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 repetitive, and I really wish as Republicans, uh, you had a better candidate in the lead, because uh, he would better serve your party. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad you think that. Uh, well, no, because I've always believed as I've grown up, you know, I've, I've always been a lefty, okay? But I've always admired true conservatives. And the reason I have is I think there should be the other side. You know, there should be the other side represented, a different form of thinking. And that by arguing out these two sides in a civil way, we come up with better ideas, okay, and better solutions to problems. Because lefties aren't right all the time. And conservatives certainly aren't most of the time. But the problem uh, we have now is there are no conservatives. Well, the, the people who are supporting Trump and the Republican Party aren't really true conservatives. No, you know? and and the more I I uh, delved into like Ramaswamy, the more I realized that I like libertarian positions. I even like Robert Kennedy. <clears throat> you know, I know that he has uh, a couple of of issues, and I don't think I would vote for him. But I appreciate one of which is his voice. What is that? Did he, did uh, he when he was a kid? Did he it, fall? It's something on a, that happened. It's it's something that a like a disease or something or, caused. Or, or, it sounds uh, like issue. when he was a kid, he he fell on a popsicle stick or something. Nah, you know? he 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 sounded totally normal uh, up until a few years ago, and this is something that uh, that just happened. I mean, it's a disability. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, you know, uh, you, know who I, he's, you know who he's mar married to. Yeah, Cheryl Hines. Yeah, Cheryl Hines. Hottie. Yeah, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Larry David's uh, wife. Larry I'm David's enthusiasm. Uh, the TV wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, did anybody watch the Tucker Carlson? Mm -hmm. um, I watched part of it. A uh, Putin thing. Uh, I watched. Uh, I watched excerpts because I understand that most of it was pretty boring. No, I Be, thought well, it was well, because, pretty interesting, uh, be, actually. Uh, because Putin was uh, giving a history lesson. A yeah, little bit, but yeah. it was history that I didn't yeah. know from his perspective. I, I felt and it was that, worth hearing. I, I felt that Tucker Carlson was maybe the worst person in the world to interview him. He did it. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, I, nobody I mean, else no, did but, it. You know, doing it and allowing... Putin to get away with what he was getting away with without challenging him. Well, okay. you don't want to get your head chopped off. Well, but th then you don't do the interview. Well, you know, he did ask, uh, for instance, that uh, um, um, uh, journalist from uh, the, um, not Washington Times, was the uh, Wall Street Journal. Oh, yeah, yeah. About uh, yeah. You know, he, he said, hey, you know, will, will you allow me to take him back? Uh you know, if Putin said yes, he would have been a hero. But he, he you know, he did ask. That's why he challenging asked. Questions. He wanted to be a hero. That's why he well, asked. That's OK. A lot of people would have avoided that. Uh, I'm not saying that Tucker Carlson is the uh, is is a gift from God. I'm just saying that, you know, he, he had an interview. I think it, it was, was I think it, it was a softball interview. OK, uh, it's you know, the kind of interview that most journalists would be ashamed to do. I don't think so. I oh, mean, yes. uh, you know, oh, yes. Barbara Walters. I would be ashamed. Uh, Fidel I, Castro. Let me put it this way: I would be ashamed to do it. I mean, yeah. yeah well, Dr. Carlson hasn't heard been heard of since. Didn't you? <laughs> didn't you say that you know the first time you interview somebody, you don't blast them right out of the? Yeah, but he's uh, never going to go back and do Putin a I, second time. I don't time. know. He's never going to get the second opportunity. If I if I were to interview Putin, I probably. Well, uh, I I doubt if I would be allowed to interview him. Okay, uh, just because oh, they would look you up, just but, like they would. Yeah, for they, they were somebody. looking. They were looking for somebody. They knew about they, Tucker Carlson's a hero with them because he's been pro Putin and anti Ukraine and everything. Well, you know, and uh, so he was the guy who could get away with it. But he wasn't the guy who was going to even even if he was against Putin, he wasn't a good enough interviewer to be able to get the right stuff. Doesn't out of Putin. matter. He got the interview and you did. I saw the, I saw a really uh, uh, Josh, do you remember a really great interview with Putin? And I'm trying to remember who did. Oh, it, it was uh, Oliver Stone, was it? Oliver Stone. 
Yeah. 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 Much better interview. It was an excellent interview. You got a better insight into who Putin was. But, but uh, Putin uh, was able to just give his side of the story. You said it's a history lesson. Well, maybe it was. And maybe that history isn't being uh, examined by uh, mainstream media. Well, no, and I think not... everybody knows the, the history and the history of Ukraine and that whole thing. And, uh, you know, you, yeah, it, it, let's be honest. Um, Putin's crazy. Putin's really nuts. He's batshit crazy. Uh, but that's the kind of person you kind of have to watch out for the most, you know. Yeah. And uh, he is, uh, what he has done is terrible, you know. It's just as terrible as what uh, what uh, the Israelis have wound up doing to the Gazans, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, those Israelis, they got through that fence. They cut off babies' heads. They burned people alive. Those Israelis oh, should be did, stopped. Oh, did, wait a minute. They wait did, a minute. They did burn. That, they that did, was the Gazans. They did. Yeah, yeah, but they killed 20,000 people, Phil, as opposed to 1,200. All right. And until Hamas is eradicated... It might take more. You're, you know, you can eradicate Hamas, and that's not going to stop anything. Well, okay, uh, because then you got to deal with half a dozen other groups, and you're only making a lot of other groups come out of the woodwork. I mean, uh, they, they, it's Hezbollah. a whole, huh? there, there were thousands of missiles being launched into Israel from Gaza, and it was being done uh, through. And a, I think the stupid, tunnel stupidest system. people in the world were Hamas because. They had to know that every time they sent in one of those missiles to Israel, it was never going to land. It was going to be stopped by that dome, that iron dome they have, where any time well, any kind of missile tries of to go, for the most part, when it tries to go into Israel, it gets blown out of the sky. Well, not all of them. Actually, uh, they overwhelmed uh, the iron dome. Uh, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, take up all of this look, conversation look, we, you like don't you don't have to in. tell me how bad hamas is i agree with you i agree 100 percent with you but i don't think that the response was equal to what happened okay uh uh 20, to over twenty thousand gazans men women children old ladies old men uh, uh people who only wanted to go back to their living quarters and live with their families and have a smile on their face and it, all of a it, sudden, you know, their life is a living hell. And it's it, all, yeah, above and it, a tunnel, and it's uh, all, a, an entrance to a tunnel that goes in their house. I mean, the Israelis no, have no, no, found no, no. You, so you much weapons. You can say that all you want to. Oh, I'm, saying, I'm just giving you the 12, 20,000 versus the 1,200. Okay? Well, all right. Well, and, okay. Wars, and, but wars Putin, are not fair. Wars and, are not fair. It's not an eye for an eye. If, if, if know, Mexico attacked us across the border and killed... 1,200 Americans. I'll tell and, you, I'll tell you, that, well, as you, as you. We wouldn't uh, just go kill 1,200 uh, Mexicans. As you know, there's a rise in anti-Semitism. Oh, absolutely. I put that right at the feet of Netanyahu. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't think so. I think, it, I think that has I been think he gave reading a, for think many, gave, many years. Gave, sense of permission. Anybody else here have an opinion on this? I, I know Josh has been, you've been pretty pro-Israel, haven't you? Yep. Um... Well, I mean, in some ways, you know, for certain certain things. A um, couple weeks ago, he was uh, very let him, let him talk while you were yeah yeah let him talk let him know? let him talk. certain thing. I mean, there there have also been uh, in their conflict uh, uh, a few hundred Israeli soldiers killed and several thousand wounded. Uh, badly enough to come basically out of service so someone is still shooting at them i mean you know i mean i read an article in the washington post that said something like three thousand israeli soldiers had been wounded um you know and and a few hundred of those were casualties so i mean they are being still shot at or you know uh otherwise attacked so it, it's it's not a complete one-sided um you know they're not running over people with with tanks and smoking cigars while they're doing it i i wouldn't 
you know, phrase it as that. Um, I'm not a supporter of their prime minister. I never have been. I think a lot of people, including me, would feel much better about their military efforts if they seem to have had a solid leader that could be around for a while and see it through with a little bit more of a solid plan. He doesn't seem to have much of one other than saying that he will, you know, eradicate Hamas, which I don't oppose, but that that's a that's a large philosophical goal. I mean, you know, it's it's I mean, I guess it's specific, but I'm saying it it's that's not really that easy. So they need some long-term leadership change and I mean I think they could accomplish that and make some adjustments and he's not really willing to which is probably not the way to go about it I mean I just don't think he's their long-term solution I think it's in his interest to make things go on for a while uh, because it keeps his power yeah Um, yeah but I, I don't deny their some some of the actions that they've I mean they are still I mean they are actively suffering casualties you know so I mean there is some conflict there I mean their their folks are being shot at you know so uh you know it's not that's that's what I've always said is it's just not as you know uh, tyrannical as sometimes people make it sound what were you going to say what were you going to say I was going to ask Josh um I, so you say you don't like Netanyahu. Is it over the two his his lack of interest in the two state solution, or um, uh, is is there some other reason that he has not lived up to your expectations? Well, I've I've never liked Netanyahu because I don't think he's a very solid leader, and I think he's nefarious and I, I, probably damn near criminal. You know, I mean they they have a hard time being able to come up with enough solid proof but i mean they've had a lot there on him for several years i mean i think he's you know i don't think he's a great person i mean he has a lot of the same personality failures as you know donald trump for example i mean he's just not i don't think he's trustworthy you know and and you know he's not a very good partner to some of his allies in some ways because he wants it only his way or the highway and i can understand that that that's their country their sovereignty etc they have the right to do what they want which is fine but at the same time we also supply about 20 percent of the money for their military budget so i i don't think that you know we should have no say you know i mean if you paid 20% 20% of my house payment, you, I think you would have the right to at least pick the color of paint in one of the rooms, right? You know, But, I mean, but, but. You're the it, one that gets the but, deal on paint. But, you know, <laughs> in, in recent weeks, Biden has, has said to him on numerous occasions, yeah. hey, lighten up, you know. Come yeah. on, you know, this is, killing is getting a little out of hand in, 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 uh, yeah. in, in. Uh, is that because Biden, Biden's base is pushing back well uh, I, I think his but, position. But, yeah, well, I think they're mad at him for not taking more of a position to try and save lives uh, you know uh, I don't think Biden's reservations are political because if they were he would be doing it much more out in the open and gaining political favor from it but he's doing a he's lot of resisted pushback. he's actually resisted he's, and it's cost yeah, him some he's votes doing a lot of the the pushback that he's doing through his private channels with his own conversations with Netanyahu and with the representatives that deal with each other between the two countries. So I don't think it's political. I think that he sees it as, you know, if they do more harm than they should, that's going to be a long-term, you know, setback. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have any sort of openness to dealing with a legitimate ruling party Mm -hmm. in Palestine, the Gaza area, that wants peace, then the Palestinians will have no self-interest in choosing an entity to represent them that wants peace, right? I mean, they're going to say, why would we choose someone who wants to make peace when the other side is saying, no, we have no interest in that. We're going to just continue, you know, uh, aggression, right? 
So I'm just no, saying, wrong. if you want someone to come to the table and talk peace with you, you have to sit at the table as well. But they don't, you know, Netanyahu doesn't seem open to that. I don't think that the Palestinians want peace. Uh, now, back uh, in, in many, many times, the Palestinians were at the table and refused uh, to recognize Israel or have peace, uh, including the PLO, which uh, was the Palestinian spokesperson at, at the time, uh, Arafat. Uh, they they walked away from all the well, peace Well, under deals. Arafat, they actually signed accords. They yes, but they they didn't they didn't have a peace deal, uh, and what happened was well, you know, there's Phil, too much Phil, money. Phil, These Phil, people Phil, in Gaza, got, Phil, the Hamas, be, yeah. as well as the Palestinians, are making so much money. They're taking all of those funds that the Americans and and the UN are giving them, and they're building tunnels. How many how many hospitals and how many schools could have been built with all of the concrete? That was used in, I think, 800 miles of tunnels. Look, uh, it, look, look. It, hey, don't don't try and give us a lecture on how bad Hamas is because we're not going to disagree with you. OK, well, you can't. You but can't what happened was they, they, like they, they got themselves into office back about nine. What was it? Nineteen. Uh, as soon uh, as, as, 20, as, soon 20, as 2012, I think. Uh, well, whenever. Oh, wait, oh, wait. It's even earlier than that. OK. Yeah. And and um, most of the people there are not fond of Hamas anymore. At the time, they seemed like a good idea. Uh, but Two then days. again, at, at the time, Trump seemed like a good idea. So, you know, people can always vote for the wrong side. Alex, two days after the, uh, the uh, incursion into Israel, uh, news people asked the uh, people of Gaza what they thought. And they were cheering uh, what was going on and what the Israelis have but discovered you have, you have is understand. that a lot of the houses that are are there that they bombed uh, there were entrances Phil. to tunnels Phil, and there you, were you, caches you're, 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 of, you have to of you're, weapons you're, you're acting like Israel is completely innocent in this whole process yes and they're, they're defending not. themselves no they, then defend yourself but don't be aggressive how can you defend your not defend yourself? You can defend yourself without being aggressive, but by holding your place, right? Well, you know the past fact is, I mean, look, you can't oh, excuse okay. twenty over twenty thousand people killed. Look, uh, when they're going to bomb a house or an apartment building, they drop leaflets uh, days before. They use a. They told uh, them a, they sent. Le they did do the leaflet thing. And they yeah, told then, them. They told them then, go to wait a minute. Go to a certain part of Gaza and get out of here. And they went to that certain part of Gaza. Because Hamas and wait a minute, let them out. Did you let me finish. They All went right. to that certain part of Gaza, and the Israelis bombed them there. Uh, look, uh, that's, not that's only Hamas let me finish. Them. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, uh, you're they, right. You're, you're right, Phil. Hamas followed them, figuring they had. How do you know Hamas followed them? They didn't follow them. They refused to let them leave. The it, intelligence. It, no, that US wasn't the point. intelligence, Israeli intelligence. I'm telling you that the place where they told them to go to, they bombed. I understand that. It's I a, heard the same news. Yes. Right. But they've been bombing for 130 days. The point is that the, the, this tit for tat, you did this to us, we did this to you, we, you did them, you did this. And it, it's, But that's not going to solve their problem. That's right. For years. Because they're uh, all... But I'm just saying, they're all still living in the past. We're in a conflict now. Let's go to the table and solve the conflict. And if no one is willing to do that, and they just want to live in the past, then the conflict will continue. All you know they I mean? do is rearm. You if know. there's a peace, if there's a peace deal, they rearm and they attack again. They, all they want is death to Israel, no, well, death to uh, America. Uh, well, to begin so with, maybe them. you agree with that. Huh? I mean, uh, both of them. I agree with that. Both both ways. Hamas does. I, I do. Hamas does, but not all Palestinians. But not all Palestinians. No, not all and Palestinians. Secondly, and secondly, let me, let me, you have to, you know, I'm not going to go back and give you the long history of that P whole Putin part. Putin did. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's a different story of, of the whole uh, uh, problems in that part of the world. Uh, when in 1948, it goes all the way back then, the UN made what I considered was a bad decision, okay? Because what it did was it displaced people. And by displacing people, 
it then turned created a certain hatred. I mean, if, if you're living in your home and all of a sudden one day a bunch of people come in and they say, hey, now we're living here, get out, and you're forced out into the desert, you're going to get a little bitter about that, don't you think? If it were uh, you, you know, or are you just uh, going to be so wonderful and say, "Oh, please take my home, take my land"? How, I've been living. Many, my family's been living here for centuries. How many Arab citizens are citizens of Israel? Not a hell of a lot. Because I think it's not about welcome. twenty percent of Israel. Uh, yeah, but there is, would be more if they weren't. If it weren't that Israel, if, how if, many? Will you listen to me, Phil? It yeah. wouldn't be if Israel were a little bit better to those Arabs who want to stay there. They are. They have every right to vote. Oh, and, oh. and, and, and I, to, Are you aware there? that the that the that the Israelis had the equivalent of concentration camps for Arabs? Sure. If you're going to try to slit Israelis' throats and blow up the you want buses to tell, and you want me to tell you what the biggest concentration camp they have? Gaza. Uh, Gaza is like a living is a hellhole of a prison. Yeah, because if they if they didn't fence them off, they would attack. And obviously, they cut through the fence and they attack. Phil, these are not the answers. Okay. Well, uh, the answer is not to allow them to attack. How did they get all of those bombs? They come from Iran. Uh, you know, if if you're going to cut and, off the head of the yeah, snake, and where you were you to, expecting you to talk for, about for, Iran? Where are you expecting for Israel to get their bombs from? From the United States. It comes from no, they, somewhere. They make a lot the of them. The fact is, the problem is this: uh, there are wars being fought now in, pro, um, pro, uh, in proxy. Uh, you know, yeah. the war in Ukraine is a proxy war. It's Russia versus uh, us, by, but giving money to Ukraine and then fighting it for us by proxy. You know? And there are and a lot of these proxy maybe wars going we shouldn't be doing on. that. Well, I think that it's time that, that we put our foot down to the Israelis and say... We want you to start acting proactive to solve this problem. Yeah, Where, where's all the money going in Ukraine? Uh, you know, we sent them what two two hundred billion now. You're watching too much Fox, billion? Phil. Hmm? You're watching too much. No, Fox. no, no, I'm not watching Fox. Actually, no. I cut the cords. I don't even get Fox. Really? I just I decided that they're all liars, and I don't want to hear any of them. And uh, yeah, so, I, where I, I where watch. do you get your information then? Um, uh, Daily Mail, uh, I get some news flashes during the day on my business computer. Uh, I, I watch YouTube. You, <laughs> I, 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 watch, I watch YouTube. I was what, almost uh, proud of you. Thank you. Uh, You're but, welcome. You know, uh, you know I, I, I watch, you know, I watch some things. I make my own opinions. And what I've come to the conclusion is, is that everybody's got an agenda, and I, I'm not oh, yeah, interested. Yeah. Well, let's let's get to a, a happier topic, okay? Whose birthday is it? No, no. Let's get to a happier topic. Uh, Joe Biden uh, is he uh, in the in the depths of uh, dementia now, or uh, no, no, no? Okay, he's having some problems. Well, uh, well I think, quite frankly. He should drop out of the race for the good of the Democratic Party, um, and here's why: I don't, I don't care whether it's right or whether it's wrong. There is a perception, and there has been even among, even among, uh, you know, liberals, that he is a bit doddering, if it were. He wasn't fit to be president this first term. Oh, come on, we're, let, we're not arguing that, Phil. He was the lesser of two evils, Phil. Yeah, he was the lesser I, of two evils. I don't think Trump is evil. Oh, you don't. No. He's, he's a, a narcissist wait, wait. and he's a sociopath. Oh, wait a so minute. What? You forgot one other thing. He's a rapist. He only cares about himself, so what? So? I mean, yeah, but, you know, he. I you think want, he's, you a, don't want I think he's like a patriot. That, religious you, oh, you, but you, you like a patriot who's a rapist. I don't think he's a rapist. He was he found guilty in court of being a he's rapist. He's appealing. <laughs> he no, says he doesn't he's appeal innocent. to me. Uh, well, he, he, <laughs> but you know he's he's appealing, and oh, I don't oh, he'll, think that, he'll appeal uh, everything. Uh, that that woman uh, is going to get one dime. And I oh, think you it's know why he's actually not going to get one dime because he doesn't have two dimes. Okay, all right, that's why. You know, plus if you gave him money for his campaign, it's going to his defense fund. Yeah, fifty fifty million. Yeah, fifty million dollars. Well, the, the reason he has to defend himself is because he's being attacked. From the left, you know, being attacked you know, the from only, the, the only, institutions that we created, Phil. 
the institutions that's supposed to uh, enforce the laws. Look, you get arrested one time for something, you go, ah, oh, they were just, you know, they were just get coming after me. They just want, they, they don't like me. They do it two times, you go, well, maybe they're just coming after me. And by, the, by four times, you got to say, maybe I did something wrong here. I don't think the guy could get a fair trial in New York. Uh, you know, uh, and he can't get a fair trial in Washington, D.C. And look at the kind of trial he's getting in, in Georgia. They, you know, the, the D.A. Uh, is, is being excoriated for uh, her behavior. And, uh, it's the Trump playbook, Phil. The Trump playbook is to discredit anybody who speaks ill of Trump. Well, that's what they try to do to Trump is to discredit him. So calling no, him a racist. No, they, they, they call, call out him, the facts. Uh, they call uh, out the facts, A sociopath. Phil. You they know, call those, out those the, are the thing. Look up yeah. the definition. Look up the definition of sociopath, Bill, and tell me one characteristic of a sociopath does not apply to Trump. Just one. Oh well, I thought the definition was Tony, but <laughs> all right. Uh, Tony's not a sociopath. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to lighten up the situation. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't. Uh, you know, Trump has as much right to run as anybody else. And, you know, the the left has tried to discredit him. They've called him all sorts of names. You know, I, I listen. No, I don't to, think they try, had to try to do anything. What well, he did. I, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Phil. Uh, he did these things on his own and he just got caught. Well, we'll see. You know, I mean, you know, Phil, this is not this is not a good person. He never was. People who lived in New York with this guy for years knew him for what he was that's why they don't like him here in new york well it's not you know? a personality contest oh, yes, it, it oh, it, oh i'm sorry it is a per oh, yes, personality it is. contest well it, for, for maybe for you it's a personality Trump, contest a, no, i want somebody that's going to keep us out of foreign wars i want no, somebody he's that's a personality help cult who only cares about himself yeah, I want somebody who's going to keep yeah, us out of foreign wars. But he only cares about himself. The only reason he wants to be president again is to be able to vacate all these charges against him. Uh, of, you, know, you know, if he so, didn't want to be president again and he didn't declare, he I wants don't think it. For, he wants charges. it only for himself and what it can do for him. Well, that's that's your opinion. You know, and my opinion is is that I think the guy is really a patriot and he wants what's best for America. And we'll see after he's elected uh, how he uh, how he runs the country. The problem is, Phil, if he gets reelected, there will be no more elections. I don't believe that. Oh, I believe it. I do. And I, I and believe I, it. And I try not to be terrible. That's just terrible. another scare tactic. You know, hey, if a Republican gets in, there will be no more Social Security. There will be You're no. Take the, your the, there will be the end of our democracy. They've been trying for forty years to get rid of it, Phil. That's not. No, that's no not they've a been scare trying tactic. to. That's not a scare tactic. They've been trying for 40 years to get rid of Social Security. That's a fact. Social Security is going to be bankrupt. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll can talk about it's that some other time. It's never going to be know. bankrupt, Phil, because people keep paying into it. No, there's less people working now. You know, when Social Security first uh, was initiated, what, in the 30s? What was there, like 35 people working for every one person taking a benefit? Wait, when, and when, now when, when there's like one person mean, working Are you telling me that during, during, the, uh, during the Depression, that was the statistic? Yeah, I think so. Oh, no, it wasn't. No. Uh, no. Well, maybe it was higher. Maybe there were more people than that working. Uh, more for, people uh, working. Every... Uh, 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 Josh, Hmm. Do you know anything about uh, the about the uh, depression the ratio and how many people were out of work? What percentage of the population was out of work? Uh, not unemployment. I was talking about the people on Social Security and those contributing. To begin with, I'm trying to remember uh, if I remember correctly. Social Security didn't come in till uh, FDR. Thirty four was it? Yeah. So how well, you're giving me a statistic from 1930? Yes. What I'm saying is when it was initiated, Social Security had far more people contributing than taking benefits. Now, there are far more people taking benefits than those that are contributing. But how could, so they, be therefore, how could they be taking benefits in 1930 when it wasn't started till about 1934? 
I said, 19, uh, in the 1930s. Yeah, well, and yeah, secondly, no, that was in the middle of the Depression. There were a lot of people, many people out of it, work. Many, that's many. not what I'm talking about. I'm, talk, I'm, I'm, re, I'm talking about how many people were contributing as comparison. What was the ratio of people contributing to Social Security? You wouldn't Security. be able to contribute to Social Security if you weren't working. Those that were contributing to Social Security were far greater than those that were taking benefit. Today, there's many more taking benefit than there are contributing. Yes, uh, Alan. Let's all be lucky that Phil sells carpet instead of teaches economics. <laughs> Why? Because you're a moron and you couldn't be in my class? No, I you know, <laughs> no, because your economics are, are just wrong. My economics are true. No. When Social Security was first initiated, there were far more people contributing than there were taking benefit. Today, it has to do with the price of tea in China. A yeah, lot, I'm, a lot, I'm Vernon. Lost. The uh, fact, because, is, fact is, Phil, Phil, there are many more people around I, today than were around then. Right. Yes, but you see, it's the ratio of those that contribute to those Here that take. Here is the only, you know how you, how you would. That's with, why with it's a, in with a, trouble. With a small solution. You saw know how you solve that problem, Phil? Yeah, you tell tell yeah. them, Vernon. How do you? You solve that problem by getting rid of the cap on income. Get there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways to solve, solve the problem. We do the that way, would solve it. but that isn't what I was talking about. All I was talking about was what and answering Alex's uh, charge, which was uh, that you know that the he says that the Social Security system isn't going bankrupt, isn't having financial problems. What you needed, what they do to make sure that they can pay the benefits is they just print more let money. Me, let me ask And that causes let me ask inflation. Here. And Josh may know the answer. Or somebody here may, Verna might know the answer uh, to this question. And that is, um, what, it, don't I seem to remember somehow we took some money from Social Security to pay for stuff? Yes. Yeah, it went into the general fund. No, the Iraq War. The yeah. Iraq War borrowed $2 trillion from the Social Security Reserve. And they never repaid it. And never repaid it. Okay, so Phil, there's one of your answers about why they're in trouble. Yeah, wonder well, if I would have known the then, Iraq War. I, if I would have known then what I know now, I never would have supported the Iraq War. And, and uh, a friend of mine got fired. A friend of mine that I grew up with from kindergarten through high school uh, got fired by George Bush because he said the Iraq War was going to cost more than uh than bush's estimates and he and summers uh were forced to resign uh uh from uh summers i guess was the treasury secretary, treasury secretary and yeah. larry Lindsay, who i grew up with uh was the um uh, what the hell yeah. was he? but you know let's get back to what vernon was saying the republicans have been trying to kill social security for years and i i don't understand why because you know, being able to have Social Security uh, means that there's money in the pockets of people who, in the at the end stage of their lives, would not necessarily have money in their pockets. Well, and wait a minute, let me just finish, Phil. When they have money in their pockets, they're going to spend it, and it helps the economy. I mean, uh, it's always been a very good idea, and it it basically is when people reach my age, who's going to give me a job, right? I need some kind of income. And so for, throughout the years, I've been paying for an income for when I retire. And uh, it's a forced uh, savings, and that's good because most people, they're told, oh, well, everybody should save for their old age. Uh, put it in a bank or something like that. They'd never do it, okay? So this was a great idea. It was a terrific idea. And so we don't have people my age being a drag on the society around us. I mean, and it's it's not an entitlement either. It's a defined benefit plan. Yeah, it's not an entitlement, and I always am resentful when people refer to it as an entitlement. Yep. You know, I wish it were an entitlement. I, I think I think the employees ought to pay nothing, and employers ought to pay double. I, I, yeah, I, that's because you're not an employer. I, I, that's I, right. I, <laughs> yeah, I think that for instance, Medicare shouldn't pay eighty percent; they should pay a hundred percent. Absolutely. I mean, you know, where 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 are elderly people, seniors, 
supposed to get their money from, you know, to pay that 20%. A lot of those seniors live off Medicare only. Yeah. I mean, I mean, live off of a, a, a Social Security only, and then Medicare digs into that. Well, I basically, I live off my Social Security, plus I have a pension from AFTRA, right. uh, SAG-AFTRA, which is about $1,000 a month. So I between the two and, and between what Marjorie has coming in in Social Security, uh, we, uh, you know, we live okay, you know, and plus we got savings. So we live okay, and I think people who get Social Security, uh, it's it's a little tight, but it's, you know, you're going to live okay, you know? Sure help me. Huh? Sure help me. Yeah. 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 Because I was, what, barely 62 when I was trying to find a job, and I couldn't find a job. Right. You know, no, nobody's going to hire think, you. You're 62. Think, and I think, and I had a stack of resumes and referrals and everything else. People called me in so they could check a few boxes. But that was about it. And I think that the reason Phil says that is because his perspective comes from the, you know, the, the perspective of a business owner. And I understand that. I do but too. if he was in the other shoe and out looking for a job, if his business shut down and he was looking for a job, he wouldn't get hired either. Have you, Phil, as a, as a um, guy who owns a business, have you been paying into Social Security for yourself? Yeah, I'm an employee of the business. Oh, okay. So you do you do pay Social Security? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then you know that when you reach uh, what about nine thousand five hundred or something like that, you don't pay for the rest of the year. You're finished. No, that's unemployment. No, Social Security no, is like no, hundred no, no, thirty thousand. No, no, Social Security has a cap, and the cap is that after you've paid. 95 what is do you know what it is vernon these days 129 129,000 uh, it's what yeah. 129,000 yes uh, okay all right 129,000 a lot more than 9,000 yeah. well, 9,000 is what, probably about unemployment about yeah. No, that's not that's not you what mean, i was may, thinking it may of. have a contribution cap as well i don't know if it does or not but it may have an either or. Such yeah. Unemployment yeah. used to the be contribution cap, money or salary. Yeah, the co contribution cap came at uh, when you had paid in ninety five hundred dollars. Now the fact is that may be the equivalent of one hundred and twenty five or something like that in total income that you're paying no. Social yeah. Security on. Oh. Yes. See, so yeah, when you reach 15%. when you went, okay when you reach that that cap. You don't pay any more for the rest uh, of the no, year. Alex, I know, I know, because I got to the point where I was doing so well in San Francisco that after my first two months of paying into Social Security, I didn't have to pay any more for the rest of the year. Look, it's it's approximately you pay up to one hundred and thirty thousand in income. The employer pays seven and a half percent to the of that to Social Security, and the employee pays seven and a half. So there's fifteen percent being con contributed. Contributed, yeah, but if on you can on the employee's a, behalf, yeah, but as so a, if you take a hundred and thirty thousand no, and you no, take fifteen percent of that, all I'm saying is that's what it that is. after I paid in like ninety five hundred dollars, I'm through paying in for the year. I may come to a hundred and thirty thousand dollars or something like that that I'm paying it on, but it's the money out of my pocket towards Social Security yeah, when I, it reaches I, a I certain think probably. Amount. The cap was lower when you were in San Francisco. It, it's gone up. Well, it might have gone up a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, you know, I mean, thirty percent. Yeah, but anyway, probably. all I'm, look, we're just, we, we're arguing about silly shit here. The well, fact is, the fact is that it, it, you got to admit, Social Security is a great idea, and if we're going to make it survive, we got to take the cap away. That's all. Yeah. Well. Uh, I'm I'm trying to find the uh, the ratio. Oh, well, forget yeah. about it. We're getting late in the show anyway. And by yeah. the time you find it, it's going to be the next century. Uh, anyway, Civil War uh, pension. You know what you, you know what conservatives don't want to talk about, Phil? What's that? It's, it's the fact that when you and I and other baby boomers die off, the number of people contributing to Social Security is going to jump way up as a ratio. How is that? Because. Big, because because people like you and me will die off and we'll no longer be pulling benefits out of the system. Correct. Yes. Michael, yeah. 
but, but there'll be some overall, conservatives don't want to talk about that look, though. Look, oh, it's uh, going bankrupt. We got to do something. We got to get rid of it. But we got to pay for those baby okay, boomers. Okay, right wait now. a minute, look, Josh. What are we going to say? Well, regardless of the the numbers, they don't matter. The point is that many people, most people, almost all people, pay Social Security taxes on 100 percent of their income. Very few people, but the ones that would contribute the most pay Social Security on a very tiny percentage of their income. So in other words, because of what I make per year, I pay Social Security taxes on every single dollar that I make. Joe Burrow, the quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals, gets his first game check for $4.9 million and pays Social Security taxes on the first X number of that hits his cap and doesn't have any more money taken out for the rest of that calendar year. But if he had to have it taken out for the rest of the calendar year, continually Correct. as a percentage. He, he would contribute a lot more money into That's the system. Right. He and lots of other people. Yeah. And obviously he would not be any worse off than he is. He and lots of other people. I mean, the number is whatever, and you could argue about it. And if sides could actually get together, they could reach some agreements on this. But I'm just saying in the overall, that is the point, is that lots of people pay that tax on 100% of their income. And there are some people, the most wealthy, who pay it on only a very small percentage of their right. income. Let me just bring up, one, a lot, but, let, you know. let me bring up one last thing, just for grins. Um, uh, we were I tried to get into this conversation about Biden and his age. Um, how many here think he's too old to run for president again? See, I have old. To old, I say no, <laughs> but competent might be something else. I don't think uh, okay. age and competence. Yeah, you, so that you, 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 okay, Trump so you Biden. you think that he may be, shall we say, heading towards senility? Would you? There's a possibility. There's a yes. possibility of that, and Republicans are yelling and screaming that too. Oh, look, see, well, they had a happy day yesterday because. The government said that he, you know, he showed Wasn't a certain competent. mental incompetency. And then I thought about it. Who was Mr. Republican? Who was the best Republican president of our time, Phil? Donald Trump. No, no. Forget about <laughs> Donald Trump. You know there were better. Uh, pro uh, well, you know, we had an older uh, Republican mm -hmm. in the 80s. That, what, what was uh, his name? Reagan. Mm -hmm. Reagan. How come his whole second term he was going heading towards senility? He was. And he was still and president, and not a, not a single Republican complained about it. Uh, I think so. A lot of people were saying that Nancy was using tarot cards and soothsayers <laughs> well, to come up with how to run the that government. Was, that was her own kind of craziness, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, I hear that was just a conspiracy theory, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, yeah? What? Well, the difference there is that he was in office, and Biden is about to either be in or not. Oh, he's going to play one of his sound effects, right? Oh, a conspiracy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, God. You know, I'm, I'm glad that he didn't wait. He just waited till the end of the, uh, uh, at the end of the program to come uh, out with that. All you got to do, Al, is say we didn't hear it. Oh, no, I, oh, it oh yeah. We, oh, we couldn't hear it, Phil. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. Do it again. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Anyway, applause. Who's trying to come on here at this late a date? Oh, I got crickets. Eddie F. Okay, all right, all right. Enough of the sound effects. <laughs> well, it's one uh, nice thing. One thing that stuff. Kevin yeah. Kevin made a good point. Yeah. Uh, my my uh, my situation was just a few years later. At age 64, I was laid off from a guy who owned two Radio Shack franchises, and started they started going bankrupt. And at the age of 64, I've realized that nobody's going to hire me, so I filed early for Social Security benefits and took a 20% hit. I did the same thing. I, I did the I same found, thing, too. I found myself out of work. But, you know, the fact is that uh, I, I worked enough over the following years to... Uh, kind of make up for it and I kind of just jumped up to where I would be if I had not taken that yeah, I, I stopped yeah. working long before yeah. well I pay tax on my social security as well yeah, as yeah. Uh, I didn't take it do. until I was 66 
because if you took any money early and you were still working, they took the Social Security away from you. So there would have been no, they didn't no take, benefit. No, I worked. They didn't take no. the Social Security away. No, they right? just Absolutely subtracted not. whatever. Right. Over for, a certain cap. Over $15,000. Okay. Okay. Right. Anyway, and listen, for every $2 you button. make okay. over we're, that we're, amount, we're running out of they time take away here. $1. We're <laughs> running out of time here. You can make up to 1200 a month. Please make it easy for me to sign off. Uh... Thank you, Phil. I appreciate you calling tonight because at least it gave us a different perspective. However ridiculously wrong you were. So, you know, but I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Alan. Great to have you here. Uh, um, uh, Josh, always a pleasure when you're here. Uh, Vernon, same to you as well. Uh, Two very intelligent people don't give me any more sound effects okay i didn't do that it's too late <laughs> that was vernon and he did it it's oh. a natural organic oh monster. i see and of course a thank you to kevin i appreciate your participation tonight uh everybody give a big wave goodbye and i'll give a big wave goodbye at you there they go ladies and gentlemen that's our citizen panel uh, 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 Amy Manuel is next. She's here with the uh, intersection, and she'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on uh, Monday for the uh, pop-up show. That'll be out going out over Facebook, and then we will see you uh, then next uh, Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Bye bye.